All right, so in this one, we're gonna be creating a comment serializer. But in order for us to do this, we are gonna be first off building a function that's gonna build the class for us. Um, and you'll see what this does in just a moment. So um, let's actually just jump right in. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and define a function and it's gonna be called create underscore comment underscore serializer. And we wanna take a few things into account here. First of all, we wanna take the type that it's gonna be. In this case, it's likely gonna be post as a default. We're gonna take a slug, which we're gonna say none. So I'm just doing the arguments that we're putting in. And then finally, parent ID, which is also none. Um, so slug is related to the actual object that we're working with, so the model that we're working with. So we're gonna be taking the post as well as the slug, because if you think back to how our posts work themselves, we use slug more than anything. And also going into the detail view, we use slug. So the chances are good that when we actually put this into a client, that slug is gonna be the main thing, not the actual ID of that post. So we wanna use slug here. Versus what we did down here with the content type and object ID, we aren't necessarily gonna be using those things when it comes to actually creating a comment post. Um, so if you were gonna be using or going off the ID, you would just change this to being object ID. So this right here is gonna return some sort of serializer. So we're gonna say comment create serializer. So that is gonna return the class for us. It's not gonna return a instance of the class, it's just gonna return the class. So inside of here, we wanna actually create the class. So I'll say class and comment create serializer. And um, it's a serial, it's of course, it's a model serializer, just like what we've seen before. And we'll just say class meta model equals to comment fields equals to, and I'm just gonna do a, uh, I'm just gonna basically copy these fields with the exception of the reply count. I'm gonna get rid of that in just a second. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, all this other stuff is pretty good, except we don't want content type or object ID. And I also don't want, um, or I'll leave the parent for now, uh, but we've got timestamp, content, ID, parent. There we go. Um, we will want to use the user at some point, but for now I'm just gonna leave it like that. And one of the biggest things that we're gonna do here is define a initializer function. So define init, and it's gonna take self args and keyword args, and we're gonna say self dot type equals to type, that is the past variable here. So let's call this actual model type versus just type. So self dot model type equals to model type, self dot slug equals to slug, and then um, we'll do self dot parent object is none. So if self dot parent ID, um, then we are gonna check to make sure that this parent object equals e even exists. So we'll say parent QS equals to comment dot objects dot filter ID equals to parent ID. So this is the comment parent ID. It has nothing to do with the, the uh, generic foreign key. This stuff is generic foreign key. This is comment, right? So again, going back into our model, Looking at this content type object ID, that's where the comment is actually going to exist. Parent is gonna be the ID, whether or not the parent is actually there, meaning whether or not it's actually a reply. So back into the, that serializer. Um, and then we'll say if parent QS dot exists and parent QS dot count equals to one, then self dot parent object equals to parent QS dot first. Um, okay, so hopefully that stuff, we don't need to explain too much, but otherwise it's basically if this is being passed, if the parent ID is being passed, we're gonna check to make sure that it actually, that that object actually exists, and then we're gonna set it equal to that parent object. Then after we do all that, we're gonna return the super call, which is super of the class itself, self, and then in it, so the default for initializing this args and keyword args. And there we go, so we've got that stuff. Um, so this is essentially just allowing us to set some things initially. 
right? And we're doing it based off of what the view is gonna to provide to us. That's why we're doing this. And so we can provide some initial value to the view by using this basic function. So then when I go to the view, I can actually create the serializer using the model type, slug, and so on. Um, all right, cool. So now that I've got that, we are gonna make another one and it's gonna call define validate. And it's gonna take self and data. And we're gonna say the model type model type equals to self dot model type. So notice this validation, it's coming from the init stuff. It's not coming from what's being passed into the function. So when we're initializing it, it's going off of what was initialized. Not again, not what was passed through the function. That's actually pretty important. All right, so now that we've got that, we're gonna say model QS. So the model query set is, we wanna get the content type for it. So um, content type that objects and then we are going to filter model equals to model type. So this is just checking to make sure that the model type or the content type that we're gonna be passing through here actually exists. So let's go ahead and import the content type um, model itself. So let's go ahead and copy this, bring it back into our serializers, put it above the rest framework one. Okay, so now we've got our content type. So we wanna make sure again that that exists and it's not like many versions of it basically. So all I'm saying here is let's make sure that this is a post model or it's a model that we actually created inside of our project. So now we're gonna say if not um, the model QS dot exists or model QS dot count is not equal to one then we will raise a validation error. And I have to import the validation errors here. So validation error. So we're gonna raise validation error. This is not a valid content type. All right, so we've got that. Uh, so now onto the next one is actually checking that this slug or this model actually exists. So this, this slug, we initialized it, but now we wanna check sure, make sure that this slug exists inside of this model. So I'm just gonna call it some model. So this is just a model variable that's testing this model itself. So model QS dot first. So this right here is actually giving us um, the query set first but uh, of the content type, but it's not giving us the model class itself. So if we do dot model class, this will actually give us the model class. And now um, this is setting it equal to this. So, for example, the post model is like, this will give us the post model. But if we used it somewhere else, let's say for instance, we decided that we wanted to have um, a, a different page altogether. So we'll just say page model or something like that. Or if we wanted to have uh, products, right? It would, it would give us that different model class based off of the content type. Um, that's really important. So essentially we are importing the model without importing the model. And it's, it's dynamic because it's using the content type for it. And that way we can actually get that model class here. So now we can check to see if it even exists. So we'll see if the object even ex exists by using some model dot objects dot filter slug equals to self dot slug. Um, so this is now checking to see if the slug is even inside of that, that model itself. This might raise an error because the slug, if the slug field is not in this random model, then this is gonna, going to fail. So we'll also say if not object QS dot exists, um, or if it's greater, than, or if it's not equal to one. So or object QS dot count is not equal to one. And we'll say, because we wanna make sure our slugs are unique, right? So we'll say this is not a valid slug for this model or this content type. Um, so those are the validation errors that we would be raising. Otherwise, we're just gonna return data. So if we weren't working in generic foreign keys, all of this stuff would be a million times easier. Um, but since we are working in that, that's where all of this stuff comes in. And it's pretty important actually um, to, to, to do it this way. So all we're doing here is validating it. If we didn't have to validate it, basically what we would be doing is we, we would just be checking whether or not this object even exists. 
Um, so that's that's something we're not going to quite get into, but um, that is validation. If this doesn't make sense, which it probably won't, think about this too. Object query set is going to be equal to um, post dot objects dot filter slug equals to self dot slug. So in some cases, depending on what we pass here, right? Depending on what we pass here, this is what's actually going to happen. If we had a different model, um, then this would change. So this is made to last for other kinds of comments. So your comments can be pluggable and used in other places. Um, all right, so now um, we are gonna have to do the comment create function, but I'm gonna leave this for now uh, and we'll come back in the next one and actually do the comment create function. Um, so if you have any questions on this, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, let's keep going.